Welcome to the experimental video for experiment 1. Start by collecting distilled water in a large 600 milliliter beaker. To accurately dispense 600 milliliters of water, we will use two volumetric flasks, one 500 milliliter and another 100 milliliter volumetric flask. As indicated in the video, use a funnel to transfer the distilled water from your beaker to the 500 milliliter flask until an appropriate level. Thereafter, use a pastilla pipette, which is a plastic pipette, dropper pipette, to reach or to allow the bottom of the meniscus of the water level to reach the line which indicates that 500 milliliters has been accurately dispensed. You will follow a, say, a similar procedure for the 100 milliliters. Should your 100 milliliter flask give you difficulty as you see in the video, just slightly lift the funnel above the level of the flask because the neck of the funnel is against the, the neck of the flask itself as you see Joel doing in the video to allow the distilled water to transfer from the beaker to the flask itself. Be careful though that you do not spill and that you do not break any of the glassware. Again, to reach the appropriate level for the 100 milliliter flask, we will use the pastilla pipette and add the distilled water slowly until the bottom of the meniscus reaches the line indicating that we have dispensed 100 milliliter of distilled water accurately. Now that we have accurately measured our water, we can add it to the thermos flask. Be careful when you add the water to the thermos flask as spillage might happen regularly, as you will see in the video. This should not happen to you as you have been warned now. Of course, it defeats the purpose once you have spilled something that you have measured it accurately because those few drops probably constitute at least 5 milliliter. If you see in the firmus flask, it should be about that level and you can close the cork. Next, you need to insert the thermometer into the firmus flask. There should be a hole located in your cork, located, and ensure that once you've inserted your thermometer, that it does not go through the spikes of the stirrer, but rather to the side of the stirrer. You can do this easily by, in, by looking literally into your thermos flask and then placing the cork. Switch on the instrument on the side and now ensure that your measurements of temperature stay within 0.5 Kelvin for at least three consecutive measurements for at 20 seconds apart each. This ensures that you have now equilibrated the system and hence is ready for the next step of the experiment. We now need to prepare our ice water. We do this by having a measuring cylinder pre-cooled by having ice in the measuring cylinder and water with ice in a beaker. Take the water with ice in a beaker and try to add only the water part into your measuring cylinder up until 100 milliliters. As soon as you get close to 100 milliliters, again we will use the pastilla pipette to accurately get to 100 milliliters. Similarly as we have done for the volumetric flasks earlier.
you can see this in the video once again look for the meniscus to be at the bottom of the line we now need to determine the temperature of our ice water here we show you how to put on your electronic thermometer because you realize that's not some that's something we didn't show you and you simply place it into your measuring cylinder containing your ice water once the measurement stabilizes you will see for about 20 seconds it should stabilize within 0.1 kelvin um, then you may take that measurement as the temperature of your ice water remember before moving on to the next experiment once you've placed it back into the thermos flask you need to allow it to equilibrate again in the next step you will add your ice water to the thermos flask and we have lifted the stirrer head to allow this so now that the cork is back in place you will see that the stirrer head is quite elevated you can lower it by adjusting the knob at the back and move it on the shaft until the appropriate marking level as uh, shown there in the video adjust the cork lid again and ensure that the, fer the thermometer is nicely stationed in the flask and switch on your stirrer head on the side of it there's a green button <laughs> then you need to ensure that your temperature is stabilized for three consecutive 20 second measurements um, before moving on of course again within 0.5 kelvin and as you can see in the video it should equilibrate quite quickly Finally, lift the stirrer head and now we will clean our thermos flask. In other words, dispose of the contents. Since it's only distilled water, we may dispose of our contents merely in the drain. Um, there's no environmental impact by disposing of water in the drain. One might argue disposing of so much water is an envir environmental impact in itself. If you were to have any ice particles stuck in the thermos flask um, you can remove that by swirling a bit of distilled water in the flask and then subsequently rinsing it out with that distilled water finally dry the thermos flask using paper towel In experiment 1.2, we will look at the heat of neutralization of sodium hydroxide with a strong acid, HCl. To start with, we need 500 milliliters of sodium hydroxide 0.2 molar solution. We will measure this using a volumetric flask, a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. And to create the solution, we will use a funnel, as illustrated in the video, transferring from a beaker to a rough estimate below the measuring line of the volumetric flask. Again, using our dropper pipette, we will then get closer to the actual point of 500 milliliters, as shown earlier for experiment 1.1 using the distilled water. Ensure that the meniscus lies, uh, the bottom of the meniscus lies just above the line, indicating that 500 milliliters have been accurately has been accurately measured for sodium hydroxide. Add your 500 milliliter sodium hydroxide solution to your dry and clean flask. Next, lower the stirrer head to the appropriate marking on the shaft, and ensure that the cork with the thermometer is sealed, ensuring that the thermometer is not inside the spikes of the stereo. Switch on the instrument and ensure that your measurements stay con consistent within 0.5 Kelvin for three measurements, 20 seconds apart, which means that the system has been allowed to equilibrate.
Next, accurately measure 100 milliliters of HCl solution as we have previously done for all other solutions. Add your acid to your stirring mixture of sodium hydroxide in your thermos flask and allow the system to equilibrate, meaning for three consecutive measurements 20 seconds apart, the system must remain within 0.5 Kelvin of the previous measurement as you will see on the electronic thermometer shortly. After your measurements, switch off the instrument and raise the stirrer head. This will expose the stirrer as well as the thermometer and allowing you to rinse them down since they have now been exposed to an acid-base reaction which can cause corrosion on these materials. Rinse them down with distilled water from a distilled water bottle, ensuring that they are thoroughly rinsed before discarding the, the contents of the duo flask in the appropriate waste container. The appropriate waste container will be clearly marked on your day as acid and base waste, as shown in the video. Open the container and discard of the contents. Please also rinse the thermos flask with distilled water multiple times to ensure that you have removed all the waste. You will repeat experiment 1.2's procedure for two more acids. In experiment 1.5, it requires 750 milliliter of distilled water. Hence, you will use a 500 and 250 milliliter volumetric flask to do this accurately as we've previously explained. Take your 750 milliliters of distilled water and carefully add it to your thermos flask, ensuring that no spillage occurs. Lower the stirrer head into the contents of the thermos flask to the appropriate level as marked on the shaft of the instrument and then ensure that the cork is to say tightly fit before switching on the instrument to stir. Once you've completed that, ensure that your measurements stay within 0.5 Kelvin for three consecutive 20 second measurements before proceeding to the next step. Now add your pre-weighed ammonium nitrate to your stirring distilled water as indicated here. Try your best to get all the ammonium nitrate, or not really your best, you must get all the ammonium nitrate out of the bottle into the stirring thermos flask to ensure that you have the correct measurements associated with the quantities. If anything is spilled over the sides, you can add that as well into the flask. Then, of course, look at the electronic thermometer's measurements and it needs to stay consistent for three 20 second measurements uh, within 0.5 kelvin and if it does then you may take it as the final temperature of your measurement finally after your equilibration is finished switch off the stirrer head raise it exposing the contents of the thermos flask opening it up for so that you may rinse your contents. Use a bit of distilled water from a distilled water bottle to rinse down the electronic thermometer, the stirrer head, the stirrer shaft, and dispose of the contents of the thermos flask in the appropriately marked waste container, which would be something like ammonium nitrate waste. Be careful as this is very oxidizing. Of course, rinse the thermos flask a few times to ensure that you collected all the waste from the thermos flask and that there's no contamination for, for, for your next experiments. Dry the thermos flask before continuing to the next experiment and ensure that there are no droplets left. You will subsequently repeat the steps followed in experiment 1.5 for experiments 1.6 and 1.7 for barium chloride and copper sulfate. Both of these are hydrated metal forms. Thank you for watching.